Miss Sarah Rosenberg. It was one of those things where we sort of spotted each other across a crowded room and uh, flirted heavily for a couple of times, didn't know each other's names. And, uh, and then I, I know I was with some friends the first time we officially spoke to each other, which was interesting because I had just found out his name, which I love, Payne, it's the best name ever. He walked by and said, hi, Sarah. <laughs> I think the next time I came into the restaurant, he and I talked and I gave him my phone number and told him to use it and he gave me um, not one but two pieces of Trident gum because it's better with two and asked for a hug <laughs> and then he didn't call and I said, you know, you didn't call me. I gave you my number for a reason, you didn't call me. And he said, I know, I, I picked up the phone so many times and, and, I, and I picked up the phone and I dialed your number and then I hung up and I was scared. And I was like, well, don't be scared. I wouldn't give you my number if I didn't want you to use it. Love at first sight is a hard thing to, to say that it is because it, you don't know that it's love at first sight when you see them. You just at least for me, I just felt something. I, it was completely un, unnameable what I felt just looking at this man that I did not know. Um, but I think somewhere in your soul, your soul knows and it senses and you might not be able to figure it out right away, but certainly something knows. So yeah, love at first sight. I never necessarily thought I was the type of girl to even get married. I didn't necessarily think I ever even wanted to get married. I certainly never thought that I would want to be married at 20. But you meet that person and uh, you know, all bets are off. Everything you thought doesn't matter anymore. And it was the right thing to do. Pain says to me, so, what would you think about getting married in Vegas? And I said, have you been thinking about this since Montana? And he said, yes. And I said, okay, me too. <laughs> I think it would be great. And they have these papers that you each have to fill out and there's a certain part on it that says, uh, you know, is this your first marriage? And Payne looked at me and when he got to that part and he said, are you serious about this? And, and I was. And I said, yes, I'm very serious. And he said, because you can back out now if you want to, but you need to know that this, I am dead serious about this. And I don't ever want to fill out one of these forms again. I don't ever want to fill out this form and say I've been married before. This is it. And... Uh, you know, it was just perfect that he would say that. I mean, of course. And I was 100%, 100% serious. I was never not serious. We were married August 14th, and August 13th, the following year, um, we were living in Ashland. We were going to the beach for the weekend to, you know, celebrate our first anniversary. And, um, Payne left early in the morning, came back with, with a dozen red roses for me, and we got on the road. We were following some friends of ours who were going also, and um, so we were driving to the beach, and uh, the car went out of control. I know that other people driving said that one of the front wheels just sort of flipped. Um, I don't know. And landed in the median. And um, some people came over to help. People pulled over. Somebody called an ambulance. 
Um, I was in shock, but not physically damaged. Pain, however, appeared to be physically damaged, and no, no one that was there would let me over there. I just remember they all held me back. They wouldn't let me go by him. And I know that pain's hurt. I know he's hurt, you know. Um, and I'm down someplace else in the hospital getting, you know, checked. I've got bruises and scratches, but nothing. His brain stem was crushed, and he's essentially, he's, he's dead. <laughs> Um, no, really, this, <laughs> what they just told me is, you know, that he's, that he's dead, and, <laughs> you know, because you want to believe that it's not true. I mean, y you don't even believe that it is true when you know it's true. You don't believe it's true. I really could not accept the fact that he was gone. My friend Heather, who was there at the hospital with me, who had lost her mother a few years previous, um, said something to me that I've said to many other people and that, that I found to be so true. And I knew, when she I knew when she said it, it was true. I knew it. And she said that it never, it never gets better. It never gets any better. You just get used to it. <laughs> it doesn't get better. It gets different. I don't regret a second of the pain that losing him caused me. I, I, I wouldn't change it for the world. I mean, of course, I would love to still have him with me, but if the price for having him was losing him, then I'll pay that price. This summer, I drove that stretch of road um, for the first time, really, since, certainly for the first time with a clear head since, and, um, wow. I shouldn't have done it. I wouldn't necessarily call myself a happy person, but when I'm happy, it's genuine. It really, it really is a, a gift to meet someone, know someone, and and love someone in the way that I love pain. And his death doesn't mean the end of, of him and it certainly doesn't mean the end of that relationship. And all we really have is, is, is the connections that we have to other people. And death can't stop that connection.